Welcome to another episode of Visual X Masterclass with Mr. Kanyelen. I want us to understand Euclidean geometry. What is it all about? And why, why is it so easy and yet so difficult? There are about 13 theorems that you need to understand. Of course, including the grade 10 theorem that talks about the midpoint. Let me just quickly talk about the midpoint theorem. It says, uh, let me write it, let me write it here. Uh, this is a theorem that you learned from grade 10. If then there is a line that is drawn from this side to that part, and this part is the same as this part, this part is the same as this part, it means that this line is a midpoint from that line. Now this theorem says, if you've got this scenario, this distance from here to here will be half of this distance. For example, if this is 2 centimeters, how many centimeters will this be? It will be 4 centimeters. As long as this part is in the midpoint of this line and that one is in the midpoint of that line. So it will also make these two lines parallel. Now if, if, if this line is 2 centimeters, therefore this will be 4 centimeters. This is what the midpoint theorem is saying. And it, it comes to grade 12 disguised. You must be able to pick it up when they talk about the midpoint. Now your, your Euclidean geometry is divided into two parts. The first part is called the circle geometry which is the geometry that is within a circle. The second part is the geometry which is not on a circle. These three theorems, which I want us to talk about now. Now, how do we, when I look at the diagrams, do we have a circle? If we have a circle, we go here. If we don't have a circle, we'll be going that side. Now, I want us to look at these that have got a circle. There are about 10 theorems. This is almost one theorem, one and two. We've got a line that is drawn from the center of a circle. How is it drawn? It is drawn perpendicular to a chord. What does it do? It bisects the chord. So this side is called to the side. The part that I'm putting in blue is the one that you need to prove in a theorem. This theorem and that I call them one theorem. It's the one that you need to prove. This theorem you need to prove in the exam. Uh, which other one? This one is also proven. This one is also proven. Those that I put stars, you must know they are proofs because it is required in the exam. There are about six in total. It is one, two, three, four, and the last two in the grade 12 theorems. So there are six in all. Now, a line drawn from the center of a circle perpendicular to a chord bisect the chord. What we are saying now, it's also examinable because we can be asked to to, 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 to complete the theorem. What is it that you see here? There's a line that is drawn from the center of a circle to the midpoint of a chord. What does it do? It is perpendicular to a chord. This is what we want to prove, whether that is 90 degrees. Remember, when you want, when you want to prove these two theorems, you use the congruence from your grade nine. This is the next one. When I prove these two, I use congruence from the grade nine. That's why I put them together. When I look at these three, set of three, uh, I use, they all have something to do with the center. When you read the statement and say this is a center, you think of these three theorems. The angle subtended by an arc or a chord at the center is twice the angle subtended by that same arc or chord at the circumference. Center, center theorem. We refer to this as the center theorem. What is the name of this line? It's a diameter. Where does it pass? It passes through the center. So this has something to do with the center because this is a center. Angle at the center. Center is twice the angle of the circumference. This theorem says an angle subtended by the diameter will always be 90 degrees. This diameter forms that angle, so that angle is 90 degrees. You don't have to be told that that is 90 degrees. Once you see a diameter, you must know that it forms an angle which is 90 degrees where? At the circumference. Remember, this theorem comes from this one. Remember, a diameter is a straight line. In other words, this angle here, from there to here, is how many degrees? It is 180 degrees. And where is this angle? It is at the center. It is twice the angle of the circumference. If this is 180, therefore that is 90. That's where the 90 comes from. It is coming from this theorem that says an angle at the center is twice the angle at the circumference. So if at the center is 2x, the one at the circumference must be x. If the one at the center is 180, the one at the circumference is 90. So that's where that 90 comes from. I've put this in a center because when you prove it, you need to create a center. Now watch here. 
This is at the center, this is at the circumference. So this one is two times bigger than that one. This is at the center, this is at the circumference. So this one is two times bigger than that one. Therefore, these two are the same because they are both big, two times big, half, 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 half of this one. So if I want to prove this, I'll need to create a center. So we call this the angles in the same segment or subtended by the same arc. All right, so those two angles are the same. Even if I'm coming from this side, I must be able to see that this one will be equal to this one. Now watch, this is the same as this one. So these two are the same as well. Angles in the same segment or subtended by the same arc or chord. Those three have something to do with the center. Now let us look at these three. These three theorems have something to do with a tangent, a tangent. This is a tan chord. An angle between a tangent and a chord is equal to the angle subtended by that chord in the alternate segment or this one will be equal to that one if i'm coming from that side called tan chord theorem and the proof of it is required this one tangent 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 so all these three have to do with a tangent so when you read the statement and say this line is a tangent the solution is likely going to come from one of the three tangent theorems now Whenever you've got a radius, it might not be a radius, it might be a diameter. When it meets a tangent, 90 degrees is formed. You don't have to be told to that, that one is 90 degrees. A tangent will have diagrams with two or more tangents. This one says, if you've got a tangent from, if you've got two tangents from the same point outside the circle, they'll be equal up to the point of contact. Whenever you see this scenario, you must know that that is equal to that one. The two tangents are the same. Now the last set of grade 11 theorems has to do with cyclic quadrilaterals. Remember that it, this theorem says the sum of opposite angles of a cyclic quad are supplementary. They are equal to 180. B plus D is equal to 180 or A plus C is equal to 180. This proof of the theorem is required. If I'm proving B and D, B and D, the construction must come from C and A. If I'm proving A and C, the construction must come from B and D. You don't need a proof of the last one, the exterior angle. This one is called the exterior angle. It's equal to the interior opposite angle. All the time the exterior angle is equal to the interior opposite angle. This is exactly what you need to look at when you solve problems. I want us to, this is what you do, you, 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 you do in grade uh, 11, which is, becomes very important for your grade 10. Let's go to grade 12 stuff. There are only three theorems that I want us to look at. The first one, it's called uh, equal altitudes. It says this area over this area is equal to this space over this space. This is all this theorem is saying. If I'm starting from this side, I'm saying the area of triangle ACD over area of triangle ABC is equal to CD over, over BC. If I'm starting this one, I'll start with this space. Right, that's what that theorem is saying. It's called the equal altitudes theorem. Now, let's look at the second one in grade 12. Uh, it's called the, the, the proportionality theorem. A line drawn parallel to one side of a triangle divides the other two sides proportionally. This one is drawn parallel, this becomes important sides. AD over DB is equal to AE over AC. That becomes important. Proportionality theorem. Proof your corner is needed in the exam as well. Let's come to the last theorem. It's called similarity theorem. If two triangles are similar, then the ratio of their corresponding sides are the same. Now it's AB over DE must be the same as AC over DF must be the same as BC over EF. Remember, you'll only be given four. Be, 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 be comparing these two, maybe you'll need DF, you'll be giving the other two and, find, and be able to find DF in that particular case.